Hey everybody, it's Keith Mayer, IT Evangelist at Microsoft, and today we're going to go through a new server installation using the just recently released Windows Server 2012 release candidate. I thought it would be useful to step through the installation for a new server using Server 2012 so that you can all see the changes and differences from installing Windows Server 2008 or 2008 R2. So here I am at the initial Windows setup screen that you'll see after booting from either the ISO image or booting from a, a USB key. Um, the, the initial setup screen has been simplified to include just a few questions, selecting the languages to install. I'm going to leave that at English. The time and currency regional format, I'll also leave it English. And then the keyboard or input method, which I'll, I'll leave at US, I'm going to leave all those default values, and then I'm just going to click Next to continue on to the next screen. And you'll see that at this point, um, the installation process allows me to jump right into installing, or if I needed to do any type of repair, perhaps I'm installing Windows Server uh, 2012 on an existing server, and I need to go through the process of cleaning off any old partitions or, or repairing my disk or whatnot, I have the repair your computer option. But in my case, I'm installing on a, a new server machine, so I'll just go ahead and click on the Install Now button, and it'll start the setup process for me. As it's going through this setup process, it's interrogating the hardware to determine and, and verify that I meet the minimum requirements for for installing Windows Server 2012. And then it gives me the select the operating system to install prompt next. Now one of the things that you'll notice that's different about Windows Server 2012, I'm just going to move this column over a little bit, is that the default installation option is a server core minimal installation option. Um, so for those of you that are, are familiar with server core from Windows Server 2008 and 2008 R2, you know that the server core installation is an installation of the server operating system with minimal components and no GUI management interface. Um, that's the default option. Microsoft is really encouraging server core on new servers going forward to help optimize the performance of those servers and, and reduce the maintenance and attack landscape for those servers. However, I'm going to select the alternative options that once it comes up, you'll also see the initial GUI that defaults with Server 2012. I'm going to select the option for Server with a GUI. Now keep in mind that regardless of which installation option I choose, one of the other new features with Windows Server 2012 is that I have the ability to add and remove the GUI management interface as a feature with Windows Server 2012. So if I start off with a Server Core installation, and I realize down the road that perhaps I need the GUI, I can go through a PowerShell command to install that GUI management framework, do what I need to do, and then when I'm done, I can remove the GUI interface. Similarly, if I install the new server with the GUI and do my initial configuration with the GUI, once I'm, once I'm satisfied with my configuration, I can then harden that server to some degree by removing the GUI management tools and turning it into effectively a server core installation. So it's pretty cool. So I'm going to select the server with a GUI option and go ahead and click Next. I have my license terms that I'll be sure to read through for this release candidate product. And then I'll accept the license terms and click the Next button. And now it's asking which type of installation do I want? An upgrade installation from Windows Server 2008, uh, 2008 R2 64-bit, where it'll keep install the, the it'll, it'll keep the Windows settings, uh, files, application settings, and whatnot. Or if I want to do a new custom install, I'm going to select the new custom install option. Um, and for the release candidate product, that's the option that I'm recommending because it is just a release candidate, and I advise you against upgrading any production servers using the release candidate bits. Instead, the release candidate is really more appropriate for testing within your lab environments, getting familiar with Server 2012, so that once the 
RTM bits are available, you're comfortable with upgrading your servers to the new Server 2012 operating system. The next screen is asking me where I want to install Windows, and I'll choose my drive that uh, is in the machine. It's not partitioned. However, I can go ahead and click on Drive Options, and then I can click on the New button to create a new partition. I'm going to use all of the available space on this drive. So I'll go ahead and leave the defaults and click Apply and click OK. And the warning screen that's coming up there is just warning me that uh, Windows is going to create, although I've selected all of the space for my primary drive partition, uh, Windows is going to create a system reserved partition that has some of the boot files in, inside of it, a very small partition that's only about 350 meg in size for, for the boot information. And this is something that's consistent with Server 2008 R2 and Windows 7 and Windows 8 as well, the same approach. So I've got my new partition. I'm going to go ahead and format that partition. And the format that's, that it's applying to this partition is the new NTFS format with the REFS enhancements for a more resilient file system um, so that uh, check disk and whatnot doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to take a disk offline in order to necessarily repair that file system. Got my new partition. I'll leave that selected and click the next button. And now it's going through the installation process. So this may take a little while. I'm just going to pause here and let it finish up, and then we'll resume once we're once we're finished with the installation. Okay, and here we are. The installation of the server operating system files has completed, and the next screen that displays is asking me for the password for the built-in administrator account that I'd like to use on this new installation of Windows Server 2012. So I'll go ahead and key in my, my password and re-enter that password just to confirm it. And then when I'm complete, I'll click on the finish button. The server setup process is now finalizing my settings and building out that built-in account, the built-in groups, putting all of the operating system files there. This will just take a, a few moments and then it uh, should reboot and allow me to log in as an administrator. And here we are. It's rebooted. I'm logged back in. I'm back at the, uh, the press control alt delete screen to log in. I'll go ahead and press control alt delete. I'll key in my new administrator password. The arrow button to accept that. It'll log me in for the first time into my new desktop environment on the server console. I'll take a brief moment just to set up my local profile environment with all of the initial personalization settings. I'll launch the desktop and then during the logon, it'll auto start the new server manager tool. And this should be the first application that you see launching after a new installation of Windows Server 2012 with the GUI management options. This is the new server manager dashboard, and it's intended to make quite an easy interface for managing our local server that we're sitting on for adding new roles and adding new features. Um, also giving us down at the bottom a, uh, a snapshot of the various roles that are installed and if there's any cautions uh, or, or errors or problems that we need to um, drill into. And here we see that because this is a new server and it's just coming up for the very first time, it's still trying to uh, read through some of the manageability um, options and whatnot and uh, run the best practice analyzer results and, and whatnot. It's not, um, not there quite yet. Um, and Windows hasn't been activated yet. It'll take a few moments for Windows to go out and, and get activated on the network. Um, in addition to managing the local server, though, we also have the ability to add in multiple server groups within our, multiple servers into a server group within our domain environment so that we have, a, as a snapshot, a list of all of the servers 
from server manager that, that we're concerned with managing. And when I go to local server, it gives me more detail on the particular server that I'm sitting on as well. So I can drill through and rename the computer. I can join it to a domain. I can change the IP address or firewall or remote management settings. And then from the manage menu, I have the ability to add and remove additional roles and features. I can also add in additional servers that I wish to manage or create groups of those servers that will appear under the All Servers node in my management tool over where we were just a few moments ago. And then under Tools, if I click on the Tools menu, we'll see an initial list of management tools that are installed based on the roles and features that are installed on our server. As additional roles and features are installed, additional management tools that are appropriate for those roles and features will be um, will, will, will be installed as well and appear on the tools menu. So my new server is up and running with a base install. It, as you see, it's pretty easy to get started installing Windows Server 2012 Release Candidate. Uh, please feel free to check my blog at keithmayer.com for additional tips and details on adding additional roles and configuring your Windows Server. Thanks very much, everyone.